but those four months in the hospital, I thought I tennis brought me the toughest part of my life. It was nothing compared mm -hmm. to what I went through last year. Because those four months in the hospital, the beginning I was contagious for the people around me. So mm -hmm. I had no visit for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And you stay for six weeks in a bubble, you know, like in, in the movies when they mm -hmm. put you in a bubble. Well, I felt I was going through a bad movie because it was my daily life back then, you know. Doctors just coming in with glove and mask and everything and treating me and then leaving. What got you through it? What was it? Uh, Wimbledon got me through it. Did it? Yeah, because, um, you know, at the beginning, after three weeks, I was allowed to um, watch something on my computer for 15 or 20 minutes. Actually, that's all I could do because I was just so tired all the time. And you watched us? And I watched... You yeah, watched <laughs> us every day. No, I watched the last two games on my final and, oh. my, and my winning speech, and that's all I watched. And, and honestly, just kept on going. I was like, OK, I was able to win this. I'm going to just win the toughest battle of my life, but I'm going to win it. I felt I was playing Serena Williams every day, but like 10 Serena at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It was really that tough. hard. It was that hard. And, um, but the, looking back now, you feel like this happened to you for a reason. And, and it has given you a, a, a better perspective on life. Definitely. You know, I, I learned that um, I was just pushing myself too much. I was doing too much at the same time. Um, I always wanted to be an achiever in everything I was doing. But at some point, you know, I was just doing too many projects at the same time. And I learned to cut on projects. I learned to say no to people because I just can't be at the same place, you know, at different hours of the day. It's just too much for me. But I know that three pillars I need in my life to be happy. And I'm, I'm rededicating really sometimes to those three. But, you know, I love fashion, but it doesn't mean I'm going to take on three projects in fashion because I just can't do it. Right. I'm going to focus on one and do that really well. And then the other things are really important for me as Could well. Could it come back? It can come back, absolutely. So I have to follow the very strict, uh, you know, not I would not call it diet, but sort of food things I need to eat every single day that I was definitely not eating before. I need to take some vitamins and minerals in order to keep my immune system, you know, at bay and, and being able to be strong enough. And I need to be very careful in my traveling schedule as well. Avoid some countries that are risky in a way. Did they ever pinpoint what it was? Uh, yeah, it was like um, H1N1. Do you remember that virus? Food. Exactly, but just a lot stronger. And because I was already quite weak back then in terms of my immune system, you know, I was just traveling so much. I did Melbourne, New York, New York, India, India, Paris in one week. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, you just go through that. all those time zones, and I was just exhausted as well. And so for the future and, and moving on and continuing with your life, what is it you're looking forward to now? Well, I'm definitely looking to uh, Wimbledon, obviously, the end of this tournament. Yeah. So commentating, um, I love to work for TVs. Um, I love to try to explain my knowledge in tennis. I love my fashion. I just adore it. That what really drives me every single day, trying to become really somebody in fashion as a fashion designer. Um, so I'm setting myself some goals. I'm trying to improve you know, my skills every single year. And then my family, obviously. So trying to uh, you know, get married and, and start my own family and have some kids. Yeah. Have you found the man yet? Not yet, but I'm looking desperately for it. Just keeping your eye <laughs> Absolutely. out. Absolutely. 